from Atlanta. You're tuned into the swanky one. New KLP. You're in the mix on the Spectrum Podcast presented by KLP Entertainment. Nika Urbano Radio Show. Hold the classics. Hitting you with that boom bap. Today's official DJ, the golden child, taking you all the way back in the day. Keeping it grown and sexy for the ladies. Hey, hey. Turn down for what? You know who it is. Ooh, it's about to get hot in here. The Hypers Mix Show is on your radio. Hip-hop and R&B. Country star, sorry for singing U.S. anthem drunk. Country singer Ingrid Andress has apologized and admitted being drunk while performing a much derided rendition of the U.S. national anthem at a baseball stadium. Andress's erratic performance of the Star Spangled Banner was widely shared after Major League Baseball's home run derby in Texas on Monday. I was drunk last night, wrote Andress, who has previously received four Grammy Award nominations. I'm checking myself into a facility today to get the help I need. That was not me last night. I apologize to MLB, all the fans, and this country I love so much for that rendition. She added, I'll let y'all know how rehab is, I hear it's super fun. Andress's a cappella version of the anthem was called Painful and one of the worst national anthem renditions ever on social media. The Daily Beast headline said, America unites over new all-time worst national anthem performance. Some people posted clips of Philadelphia Phillies third baseman Alec Bohm apparently smirking as Andress was singing but she also received sympathy and support following her apology. I'm so sorry you're going through this, singer and actress Lucy Hale wrote. Sending you a lot of my thoughts. Take care of you and you're going to come out of this so much stronger. Country star Martina McBride said, sending lots of love and positivity. You got this. Singer-songwriter Julia Michaels said, love you, girl. I'm sorry you're going through this. And I'm sorry the world can be so cruel. Here for you XXLO singer-songwriter Carly Pierce said, being this open takes a lot. You've got this. Hang in there. And one fan posted a video of Andress on stage at a concert to show her true talent. Andress appeared as an a cappella singer on NBC series The Sing-Off in 2010 and after forging a solo career, was nominated for the 2021 Grammy Award for Best New Artist. She also co-wrote Charlie XCX's hit song Boys and BB Rex's Girl in the Mirror. Who was Africa's first black Olympic gold medalist? In 1960, on a warm night in Rome, a barefoot son of a shepherd stunned the world and made history for Africa. That evening, the streets of the city were lined with spectators cheering for the marathon runners competing in the Olympic Games. Along the road, Italian soldiers held torches to light the way as an Ethiopian runner named Abebe Bikila sprinted towards the finish line. For most of the course, Bikila, in red satin shorts and a black vest, had been level with the marathon favorite, Roddy Ben Abdesalam from Morocco. Then, with less than a mile to go, he began to pull away from his competitor. He sprinted towards the finish, raising his hands in triumph as he crossed the line. Not only had he come first in the race, Bikila was also the first black African and the first Ethiopian to win a gold medal at the Games. In doing so, he set a new world record of 2 hours, 15 minutes, and 16 seconds. It was a shock triumph, not just because Bikila was a complete unknown but because he had run the entire length of the race barefoot. Bikila had made the decision to do so because his running shoes were worn and he feared a new pair would cause blisters. Normally champions rise up the rankings and so when they get to the top they are known, but Bikila was utterly unknown, says Tim Judah, the British writer of a book about the runner. So this compounded the shock, a barefoot African winning the marathon. Bikila returned home a national hero, greeted by thousands. However, his 1960 victory bore significance beyond his home nation. This was the period of decolonization and the arrival of Africa on the world stage, says Judah. In that sense, he was like a shooting star of hope and a symbol of the era. The symbolism of Bikila's win continues to this day. If you look what happened to Africa, independence started after Abebe Bikila won in Rome, says the former Olympic and world champion Ethiopian distance runner, Haile Gebra Selassie. When Bikila returned to his home country, the Kenyan newspaper Nation reported that Emperor Haile Selassie awarded him the star of Ethiopia. He also promoted him to the rank of corporal, gave him a house and new Volkswagen Beetle. Bikila's upbringing was far from the glamour of his Olympic triumph. He was born in 1932 in the rural Ethiopian village of Jado, the son of a shepherd. As a young man, after moving to the capital Addis Ababa, he joined the nation's imperial guard where he was given the prestigious role of protecting then-Emperor Haile Selassie. 
It was here that his athletic talent was spotted by the Swedish coach Ani Niskanen, who had been employed by the Ethiopian government to train soldiers. Niskanen began training Bikila to compete in the marathon. However, Bikila was not considered Ethiopia's best runner. His teammate Wami Birata was favored for the Rome Games but, just days before their departure, Birata fell ill and had to stay behind. Bikila's legacy was cemented at the 1964 Tokyo Olympics, where he defended his marathon title, becoming the first person to win back-to-back -back gold medals in the event. To this day, Bikila remains one of only three runners, alongside German Waldemar Sierpinski and Kenyan Eliud Kipchog, to have done so. This time the runner wore shoes. But he had another challenge to overcome. Just 40 days before the event, Bikila had undergone an emergency operation to remove his appendix. Despite only having weeks to return to full health, he sprinted down the running track in Tokyo's National Stadium to set another world record of 2 hours, 12 minutes and 11 seconds. According to World Athletics, Bikila won 12 out of 13 international marathons between 1960 and 1966. But just five years after his second Olympic win, tragedy struck. In March 1969, reportedly while at the wheel of his Volkswagen Beetle, Bikila was involved in a car accident that paralyzed him from the neck down. He was flown to the Specialized Spinal Injuries Unit at Stoke Mandeville Hospital in England for treatment and had to accept that he would never walk again. But the runner was able to regain control of his hands so he turned to other sports, excelling in archery and table tennis. In 1970, he participated in the Stoke Mandeville Games in London, an early precursor to the Paralympics. The following year, he competed in Norway, where he won the cross-country sleigh riding event at a competition for disabled athletes. In 1973, Bikila died at the age of 41 because of complications from his accident. Emperor Haile Selassie declared a national day of mourning and Bikila was given a state funeral. But despite his early death, the runner's legacy continues. There is an Abebe Bikila Stadium in Addis Ababa and many schools and awards bear his name. Bikila's biggest legacy has been to inspire a new generation of long-distance runners across East Africa. A number of Ethiopian and Kenyan athletes, such as Haile Gebre Selassie and Eliud Kipchoge, have gone on to dominate the sport. We, African runners, are the result of Abebe Bikila. Because of Abebe Bikila, I became a world-class athlete, says Gebre Selassie. Getnet Whale, who will represent Ethiopia at the Paris Olympics in the 3000M steeplechase, has described Bikila as a trailblazer. He was the first. He's always remembered till this day. I live from Atlanta. We keeping things swanky with that new KLP. It's the Spectrum Podcast with Kennedy Lucas, Damian Marks, Simone Teagues, and Monica Gray. You're tuned into the swanky one, New KLP. You're in the mix on the Spectrum Podcast presented by KLP Entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Spectrum Podcast. I'm your humble, gracious, highly favored podcast host here today. KLP Kennedy Lucas, welcome back to the podcast, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope that you guys have been having a fantastic, and I do mean this, Monica, a fantastic week so far. You know, it is the middle of the, the week, but it's, you know, by the time you're hearing the podcast, it's hump day. Hopefully you guys are ready for another one. Um, Yes, we're here in the studio. If you guys missed yesterday's episode, of course, we brought back SNN Sports. Let me tell y'all. We dabbling into this animation game. Like, we getting into it. We getting to the damper of it. And I get very excited because, um, you know, when it comes down to animation, uh, Monica, this is something that we, we got cooked up for a long time. And, you know, everybody's been enjoying the progress of it, of course. Um, some announcements. I got some announcements. But before I get to the announcements today... We got my girl Monica here in the building. Last week's episode, Monica and I talked about some great conversations, and you guys enjoyed the topics of conversation we had going on. So, again, I had to bring her back for episode, the next episode, uh, just to get her uh, fleshed out there and get her ready to go. And, you know, she's getting her voice back. She's getting it back, and it feels good. So, Monica, how you doing today? Happy Wednesday, everyone. Shout out to all the ladies out there. Welcome back to the Spectrum Podcast. 
It's your girl, Monica Gray. We back with another exciting episode. Kennedy, I'm doing good. It's been a one heck of a wallop of a week. Meetings, more meetings, more meetings, film production, working on a music uh, for an artist of ours, more meetings. But it's been a good week. It's been a grand, grand week. I got to get this little promotion out here because I always ride for the ladies. So I'm going to ride for the ladies. Again, uh, Mississippi Gulf uh, Coast. Get ready. Our girl, Chill Purcell, will be heading your way with the first look of the comedy special that she did. It's coming out. It's ready to come out again. Pop your shit. Chill Purcell, you got to be there August 8th. Be there or be square. It's going to be at the Cinemark Gulf, um, uh, Cinemark Gulf Coast 16. So you guys want to make sure that you guys are there. Uh, we're going to be there. It's going to be an amazing time. So that's something you don't want to miss out on. Like Kennedy's been saying, because we've been in the editing room, we put it together, we've been there. She got some funny material. She got some funny stuff on there, and I there might be some behind the scenes. You're going to see Shell Purcell there. Herself is going to be an amazing time, so get your tickets at shellpurcell.com. You guys don't want to miss out on that grand first leak. Uh, look for the comedy special. If you're in the Mississippi Gulf Coast area, please get your tickets at shellpurcell.com. Sorry, Kennedy had to get it out there for sure, but it's been a great week so far. I'm doing good. I'm healthy. I'm highly favored. It's been very, very good. Uh, one thing that I've been doing, and I think I've been making people's day, Kennedy, when I go to the grocery store, because obviously we had to go to the grocery store uh, to get groceries, and while we're, you know, checking out, you know, checking our things out, paying for our items, and I always say to a lot of people out there, because we see the Facebook videos Guys, when you go to the grocery store, don't steal. You pay for your stuff. If you can't afford your groceries, you might not want to be in there right now. You might want to figure out your situation. Never steal. Because once you go out there and you try to steal an item at the grocery store, then you're out of luck, and then you get caught, and then it's theft. Now you got a record on your name because you stole a can of beans when you could have just paid for it. I know tough times are tough. It is rough times right now. I completely understand. But please... Stay humble with it. If you got it to where you need to get some groceries, please, please, please pay for your items if you go to a grocery store. They don't want to trace you down. I remember a couple of weeks back, we went shopping, and we're down there doing some shopping, and all you see is the two guys running, uh, running for their lives, and they stole something from a store, and then security and the person that worked there worked at one of the, the stores in the mall. They tried to chase them down. It was hot. Please don't steal. It's not worth it. If it's if if you don't have money to, to to pay for, put it back. Come back when you can. Because let me tell you, once you steal and you get arrested and it's on your record, that's something that's on your record. And God knows when you try to apply for jobs or try to get something to get some credit, you won't be able to do that because that's on your record. So please, 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 don't steal. It is not worth it. So one thing that I've been doing though at the grocery store, checking people, uh, checking my items out. When someone says a uh, customer service uh, person that works there, either cashier or someone that's uh, that's at your service type of deal, uh, the lady said, hey, you know, you have a great day. I said, hey, you too, have a blessed one. And then she's like, ooh, I received that. And then I said, amen. That makes people day. I know some people are not that religious in this world, but I'm, I'm very religious. I pray every night and every morning, so... This is one of the things that I don't want to miss out on my blessings with. But I think that makes people day when you're able to do that. So I love to do that. I encourage people to, to do that because we, we do live in some crazy times right now. So I love making people's day. I think I made her day when we went to the grocery store yesterday. Very, very excited. We got an exciting podcast, Kennedy. And I am glad that I'm here. So glad to have Monica back into the studio for the Spectrum Podcast. Uh, and you guys peep the new intro, too. We always we always working on these new intros, right? We always cooking up some new intro, some new voice work here in the studio. Um, so, yeah, we've got quite a few announcements. And then I'll start with the uh, first topic, uh, hence the title of the uh, podcast today. A um, couple of few announcements from the KLP Entertainment family. Uh, first off, drum roll. 
The Photographer Has Wrapped Production. Can't wait for that as well. Uh, the Photographer is my latest new movie, animated movie that is, uh, from Blue Films and Kennedy Lucas Films. We're switching things up with my new animation studio, Kennedy Lucas Animation Studios. Um, guys, I cannot express to you how much I love this project. Uh, I work really, we, and I got to stop saying I, yeah, I know I was a director and I wrote it, but we, because there's a team that's behind this, we worked really, really, really hard um, on this movie. I hope that this brings movie, uh, brings people joy. There's some joy in this movie. There's some heartfelt moments in this movie. There's an educational moment in this movie. There's an inspirational um part in this movie there is a dark version uh portion of this movie um without giving too much away um this is the new wave of kennedy lucas films um this will introduce a new type of filmmaking for me um everybody knows this about me but i love animation i'm a big kid at heart because i do watch pixar movies i do watch DreamWorks movies Disney movies. I do watch these movies because not only I enjoy these movies, but I get inspired to continue to make movies into these style of Pixar because I'm learning how they make it. And they make millions, right? So I'm dabbling into this verse and I cannot wait to film more movies. Uh, the next one that I am thinking about writing and coming up, it will be my first superhero movie, right? Never done this the superhero movie besides Guardians. But Guardians, Guardians was good, but it didn't count because it wasn't out, out. But I'm thinking about writing a superhero movie because why not? So it is one of those things that I get very, very joyous about. I'm so excited uh, for this movie, The Photographer. I, I wrote this movie in 2020. And after 2020, when I was you know home, I was quarantined, I was drinking a lot. And I wrote this movie and I wanted to, to, to put this movie uh, in production on a closed set and closed studio because it was COVID. I needed something to do, but then it was COVID. I got depressed. I played video games. I ventured off to other things and other things, other movies came um, before this one. So I'm very, very excited for this one. I hope everyone enjoys this one once this is ready to be released. Very, very excited for that. Um, besides me writing this um, superhero movie and doing touring, um, movies for us will be not on the back burner we're writing this new one and you know we've got another one coming to 2b but uh we are semi and i briefly briefly taking a break the reason why because i'm happy to announce um by the time you're hearing this uh you and this is monica you getting the first and monica you know but everybody that's listening to this episode you guys get the first look and then i'm going to do a social media post about this but you guys know how when i was getting my MBA uh, for project management, and I, I took you guys along the journey the last two years. Um, but I'm excited to announce that I will be starting my PhD in organizational leadership. So excited for that. Um, the timing is right. I know a lot of people are like, dang, you're going back to school? Didn't you just finish? Yes. I've always had this goal of mine, and I was talking to my representative, and they say, well, Kennedy, this program's not two years. It's a three and a half program, right? It's it's a longer program, which is understandable. If you double up on classes, you can get done quicker. I, I, un, you know, I run a studio. I run some businesses. So unfortunately, I won't be able to do five classes at one time. I can't do that. But if I do one class a time, I can get it done in three years. I am willing to wait for something that spectacular. So my new goal will be before i hit 32. um definitely before i hit 32 i'll have my phd in business organizational leadership um this is a program that i've thought about for a long time because i worked in organizations right i run an organization KLP entertainment working in education working for hospitality and i got my bachelor's in business administration and marketing and then i got my master's in project management so now let's add something up number three let's add number three but let's do something different so that way i can combine all three of those things into one so uh very excited for that um it's going to be a three-year journey 
Uh, it's going to be something that I'll be passionate about is organizational leadership. A lot of people did say that I was a great leader. Uh, I've been a great leader in different positions before making decisions. Um, despite one university that thought that I wasn't a good leader, but I did leadership things. But hey, that's near near. There's you know, that's my past now. I'm passionate about leading. I'm passionate about organizational uh, business structure and doing something that really works well. And then it's it, and it's it, Monica. This is the title of it. Is the title is Doctor of Philosophy of Organizational Leadership. That just sounds so swanky to me. So PhD, here we come. I can't wait. Uh, it's going to be very, very exciting um, when I do that. And then I got asked, you know, what my dissertation is going to be about. So I got two topics for my dis dissertation. Um, so we'll, we'll see. You know, I, I can't wait to take you guys along the journey. Uh, I'm going to uh, tell you guys about each class that I'm telling. Each class that I take, I think I'm going to do a special podcast for. I think that's that's going to be the move going forward with the podcast to get you guys interested. Um, but, yeah, it's time. I know a lot of people say, hey, why am I going back? It's because I'm getting older. Um, a lot of people don't have the bachelors, right? And I know we're in this time where a lot of people are not going to school. I do encourage people to go to school because, like it or not, it's, yes, I know some jobs don't hire. I, yes, I know jobs who are looking to hire, they take a long time. Yes, I know. I get it. But you got to understand, some jobs out there require a doctorate degree. Some jobs do. If you want a good job, stability, and some people are stable with their normal jobs now. I'm pretty stable with my jobs now. But I feel like I can achieve something more. I think I can go further, 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 further. And if I can go to the very extent of going even further than where I've been, and I've been uber successful, right, so far. But to me, I'm still hungry for more. I'm still not fulfilled. I'm still not satisfied. And God put me on, not to get preachy here, but God put me on this earth, I feel, to go the extra 10 miles. I went five miles and thought that was enough. No, God said, you need to go an extra 20 miles. I want to see 25 miles out of you. And that's what it takes. That's what it takes. So that's my philosophy in that. That's my goal for that is to go further. Because I think, and it's no brag on my family whatsoever, um, but my parents, they were doing their doctorate. I think my dad's still doing his doctorate. My mom was doing it, but she took a little break. But out of five kids, and I joke, I love I, my, my five siblings. I love y'all. Y'all know I'm just joking. But out of my brothers and sisters, I am the most... <laughs> educated one and again i'm just joking i'm just joking but i'm the only one out of five who have their master's degree and i think i'll be the only one out of, well not the only one but i'll be the first one out of five to get a phd i don't know something about us number four i don't, I don't get it so very very excited for that um you know um so i'm excited for that like i say through because i'm still podcasting my three-year program i'm still podcasting i'm still making movies i'm still working my my, my full-time jobs it's not like i'm taking a complete break to go to school like i say this is an online course i could take one course uh every eight weeks so I, i've done that with my master's and i find that to be very enjoyable i find that to be easy i find that to be very very good for my schedule so I can focus on one class at a time and just take my time with this because it is a doctorate program. This is not something that I can just brush over. This is something I got to make A's in, right? I can't make a B in this class because that's a doctorate program. So I'm going to double down and focus more on this program while doing my extracurricular and we'll see where it goes. You know, it, it doesn't hurt to try at least, but damn it, if I went through my master's degree and I had some struggles, I can get through my doctorate degree probably with ease. We'll see. So very, very excited for that. Now, I've got topics. Again, I'm not going to babble on about what I got going on. Um, I got to talk about this real quick, uh, Monica, because this is something that was on my mind today. So a lot of people received their Georgia Power Bill. And... I can only say to people out there in this world to stay humble, to stay blessed, and just work really hard. And the reason why I say this is because a lot of people are getting their Georgia Power Bill, and it's astronomical. It's high. 
I watch this news channel station, and I'm dating where I'm from originally. I'm from Atlanta. I like to say I'm from Atlanta, but there's this news station called 13 WMAZ in Macon, Georgia. Now, even though I like to say I love to say I'm from Atlanta because Atlanta changed my life for the better, but I was born in Macon. I was. In 13 WMAZ, that's when Ben Jones... And Frank, I forgot his last name, but Frank, those, those two anchormen, I think Ben Jones is still there. I think Frank probably retired, but I was there for those days. My parents was on the news twice a year, and that was each year on Halloween and Christmas because they wanted to get the scope of family shopping back in the day, and my parents were on 13 WMAZ. They were on the news talking about, hey, we're shopping for our five kids. Yeah. 13 WMAZ did a special report yesterday about how high power bills were. One lady went on there and she said, Monica, that, hey, my power bill was $1,200. That power bill is high as hell because that's rent money for some people. Hell, that's one third of rent money for most people in today's society because rent is high. And you really get to know, you really get to understand, you really get to really learn that, hey, Georgia Power, they up to something. I don't know what it is, but they up to something. I think, here's what I think, is there's no shit talking on Georgia Power because, hey, at our house, we pay our Georgia Power bill. Our Georgia Power bill was high. It, I ain't gonna lie, it was high. And you really want to know what in great googly moogly is going on with our georgia power bills everybody's georgia power bill has went up double and i don't think when they went on news it's our power plants we got to improve our power plants we're adding some extra lines there's a cost for this they even brought up hey well we sending power and resources to ukraine so that's why our stuff is high and that may be true and I ride for Ukraine. I hope Ukraine gets out of the war. I really do because it's it's sad times for Ukraine. I've got some friends, a lot of friends from Ukraine, and they're they did they're going through it mentally. They're going through it. I get it. I understand. I totally get it. But I don't think that's the end game for Georgia Power. I think Georgia Power is doing it to where a lot of companies are doing, and I gotta say, shame on y'all companies, honestly, taking advantage why us while we're dying. And the reason why I say that is because Georgia Power does this thing to where they're able to say, oh, inflation, inflation's this, inflation's that. But they're using it as a tool for everybody's Georgia Power bill to be high. Oh, it's inflation, so we have to increase our pricing. No. So what happens to the people who can't afford not that lady on 13 WMAZ, she said, yeah, you know, the bill was 1200 We paid it. I'm like, but that's rent money for a lot of people. So you have now a choice to pay rent or to pay your Georgia Power bill. Now, if you don't pay your rent, then you won't have a place to use your Georgia Power, to utilize power, right? But if you don't pay your Georgia Power bill and choose to pay rent, you have a house, but you ain't got no power. You need power for your game systems, your TVs, the cook, lights, washer dryer what else you need georgia power for monica let's see um if you got if you got somebody here at our house you know at my house i have a humidifier i need power for that my alarm clock i need power for that i gotta charge my phone i need power for that right i need to cook some dinner oh I, you definitely need power for that so it's crazy. It's one of those things that I just encourage people to get through it. I know it's tough. They also threw in the face, oh, well, it's summertime, so you're running your AC. But no, I don't think that's the case. Each year, our house, we keep it on a set degree. Let's say 69 for an example. Keep it on 69 where the AC is because it's hot. It's 100 degrees. I can't. We can't have the house on heat when it's summertime. I just can't do that. It gets really, really hot. But we had it. this, And we've been in the house for a couple years now. Our house this year, 69. Last year, we did 67 because it was it was a hot summer. But we never seen an increase in our power bill. We might it might went up two, three dollars, but we never seen the increase significantly like we've seen it. Right. 
Some people, if your power bill was $100, you're looking at $300. God believe, God, God help you. If your power bill was originally $400, you might be looking at $600, $700 in power bill. And it's a, it's a shame. It's a shame for companies to, to price gouge. It's a shame that some companies are taking advantage because I honestly do think no shit talk on Georgia Power because we need Georgia Power, but you're kind of taking advantage of people. <coughs> I feel like you are because now people have to people have to beg for money. People, Some people are maxing out their credit cards to pay their bills. Thank God that I'm not in that situation, but people are physically maxing out their credit card bills because they need to pay a bill regardless some people are finding alternatives for stuff especially in food people are finding alternatives hell i'm not ashamed to say i'm finding alternatives when i buy groceries i was the alternative eternity for this box of cereal i might not in for an example because i don't eat breakfast like that i may not buy the um the 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 tricks so I got to go and buy rainbow candy or I can't buy the Cocoa Puffs because they're six dollars. Let me go with brown rounds for two dollars, <laughs> you know, so people are pivoting and it is it's unfortunate. I do hope we get in, get back into it. A lot of people can think, hey, it's the politics and it's presidents and we're not going to dabble into that because we got enough of that already from CNN. But people are struggling. People are struggling really, really bad. I, I hope that people get through it. Uh, my, my prayers go out to people who have to now decide to pay their phone bill or the power bill. Some people might have to decide, okay, we got to pay rent or a power bill. They're both the same price. So which one do we value more, right? People are like that out here. And then there's the question that people ask Monica that what it, the girl asked on 13 WMSA, what happens next month? What happens if somebody can't pay it? Well, they turn it off. They don't, they don't care. If you can't pay your power, they don't care. Sorry. You can't pay your power bill? Oh, I'm sorry. That's it. That's it. They, they got to make their money. Um, so I do encourage people. I encourage people, you know, just to look out for one another and just stay, stay sane. Stay sane in this society, man. It's, it's getting rough out here. So, Kennedy, I have a special topic that I wanted to talk about here today. And this is a question that goes out to all the ladies out there. Now, ladies, I get it. We want to make sure that we... Smell good, Kennedy. That was last week's episode. Smelling good, smell good smells and things. We want to make sure our hair are done. We want to make sure that we smelling good for our men, right? Now the question comes for me. Do and this is for the ladies, because I know what the men will say. Men will say, "Yeah, this matters. If you have your, if ladies have their nails done and to the point to where it looks clean, then yeah, they they envy that." I know some ladies, uh, some men don't like where ladies have nails like really, really long, like Wolverine claws, because you got to watch out for that. They, they're going to stab you if you make them mad, right? They're going to claw you out like Wolverine. Shout out to Wolverine and Deadpool coming out next week, the movie. We're going to go see that, Kenny, by the way. But I asked my ladies, do you care about men getting their uh, nails done? Do you care? Does that matter? The reason why I'm asking this case is because Chris Brown catches he from getting his nails done. For me, long as you, I would say there's nothing wrong with men getting their nails done or their feet done. I, I don't know why people have this weird stigma that, oh, that's gay. Oh, he's gay if he's getting his nails done. That's gay if he's getting a pedicure, medicure. I don't think that's gay. I think that that's a good moment. As long as you take your partner out with you to get a pedicure and Medicare, now that's date date night. That's a date, in a way, if that's your thing. I know a lot of men out here in this world that likes to get their their nails done and the Medicare done. Now, Kennedy, I know he, he clips his toenails and fingernails when they get a little crazy. Kennedy doesn't like to get the the, foot, the feet rubbed because he's very ticklish. I tried it. I tickle him in the bed. I tickle him on the feet, and he laughs hilariously because he can't, he's very ticklish. So I don't expect Kennedy to do it. But some men do it. Now, Chris Brown is currently on a massive tour right now. Obviously, we've seen it. And Chris Brown, let me tell you, Chris Brown, 
it was Chris Brown and Tank for me when they both was on tour. Overall, there's been a ton of viral clips from his tour, much like Usher, Usher and his residency. Women have been flocking to the tour to get a glimpse of the artist. Moreover, there has been plenty of viral images to come out of meet and greets. Now, Chris Brown's been doing that thing where if you're able to pay up to a grant, see, and this is where priorities lie because we just talked about the high Georgia power bill that everybody's receiving. Now you can't take your one thousand dollars to take a picture of Chris Brown because now you got to pay your power bill. I think it's asinine. If you're paying that much for a picture, then you can pay for your power bill if that's the case. But besides the point, Chris Brown has it to where he's charging up to most gra a grand to get your uh, get your pictures and stuff done. Although some of the photos or has been very controversial, others have been um, been fun and playful. Uh, wherever the case may be, there's no doubt that Chris Brown is seeing a solid amount of late career success. Um, it's been uh, very, very interesting for him to say that he's been getting uh, his nails done. There's nothing wrong with it. I saw the video. I'm looking at the video. Let's see. Let's get. Let's see if we can get the video pulled up about. There's a video. We're watching the video right now live. There's nothing wrong with that. I think. And I'm seeing the comments here. It, and I can read the comments. The comments say, that is not cute. Christopher Brown, is that eggshell on your nails? And there's more comments from Instagram, too. You got to rely to the comments here. Uh, someone said, not y'all. Now y'all know that man be beating the kitty cat up. Let him, leave him, let him alone. I'm going through the comments. I'm not reading the long ones. LOL poor Dwayne Wade got a total different response. He got prettier hands than me. <laughs> uh, make men masculine again button. Look, there's nothing unmasculine about that. It's not like he got long nails and painted coat. And if that's your thing in a man, if a man likes it, a man likes it. But there's nothing wrong with it. I think it's clean. I think it's just making him look more clean and up put. I don't understand. Again, a lot I'm seeing a lot of comments. Hey, men, man, you know, this is gay or this is unmasculine. No, somebody said this is a guy. They look great. Men should invest in grooming. I agree with that. Women like, okay, some women. I'll say, Kennedy. Women like men who are groomed, nails done, clean, fingernails cut, clean, hair cut trimmed up smelling good we like that just one thing uh just this one time i'm gonna act legally blind wow wow he could he could paint them barbie pink and i still wouldn't give af go ahead give bro the same type of slander y'all giving yachty okay then someone said not candy cane oh well that is funny though we made we made a shirt i don't know what that means there's nothing unmasculine about this. I think they look clean. They look nice. They look better than mine right now. Need to get mine done. Um, but besides the point, there's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing wrong with this as well. I think people should be available to do whatever they want to with. And it's their body, first of all. Chris Brown can do whatever he want with his body. It's not like it's your body. And let me tell you, he can still pull all the ladies. I'm not going to say the B word, but he can still pull out all the ladies when it comes down to this. I think they look nice. I think Chris Brown doesn't really care because he's on tour. He's making tons of money. He still seems amazing as he get a little bit older in this lifetime. He is still an amazing artist. So I don't think he really cares that much. I think a lot of people should not be, should not be so uh, eager to be but into someone's conversation but into what they like to do to their bodies if it makes chris brown feel good look good then he's gonna do it regardless of what people think and i also think this is a great outlook for him i think it's gonna be good for him it's just him being him um dudes we gotta stop y'all gotta stop saying that this is unmasculine because there's a plenty of men who go out there and get a medicare pedicure done so i like it I like it. Yeah, what Monica said, it's none of y'all business. Chris Brown can do whatever he want, like Monica say, because he still pull on the ladies. I had to watch myself. I almost said something. Um, but, yeah, Chris Brown, man, you do your thing. I'm always going to be a fan. 
always gonna be a tremendous fan so speaking of who i'm a fan of kind of i mean sort of uh ice spice weight loss has fans divided let me tell you um she looks completely different in this photo um overall ice spice is quite polarizing figure of hip-hop we all know that now this attitude among stunt fanatics of of the genre began when she dropped munch feeling you in the summer of 2022 a lot of listeners were quick to dismiss her for her lack lyrical content and overall talent back in the day generally speaking the consensus i would say was that her physical attributes were carrying out and a lot still felt that way i gotta say however the new york native has proven the haters time and time again from her hits right i, I like delhi she's checking her ass in the deli i she got no panties i like that song i work out to the song i do i ain't ashamed to do it but there's been one thing that comes with the fame and popularity is the critics will continue to follow you just like that ice space now in her case yet again has to deal with her appearance since coming into the game the uh fat butt rapper if you will instantly lost the weight now some people have been saying that she's using some sort of um damn what's that drug monica they they, they joked about it on the joe Bun podcast but it's like the pill that you take helps you lose weight quickly because you're shitting it all out uh Lizempic, i think that's what it's called then some people are arguing that she took that i don't know the case because you know we don't live with ice space so we don't know ice spice look good and thick and skinny only a certain demographic gets mad when someone loses weight and not everyone cares about a fat ass let me tell you this kind of this is the last thing that i'm gonna say on the podcast but and i know I'm, monica i'm about to make some dudes mad i'm about to make some people mad when i'm about to say this but honestly to my opinion there is a thing is too much ass there is I don't care what people say. If you got a BBL, that's you living your best life. But honestly, I think BBL is a little bit too much. I think BBLs make people look dysmorphic. I think they look sick, in my opinion. In my opinion. I know some people say, hey, now you're judging about somebody's parent. You just talked about Chris Brown living his best life. I agree. But I also got opinions don't matter how you there is a thing as too much ass to me i like it natural i like it natural i if you got a naturally big butt and it's natural and then you were born with it well by all means you're born with it but if you had to get some sort of surgery done just to perfect it nah i'm good i'm good on that mama because i know that it's unnatural it is not real right and you can get you can get sick you know you can hurt yourself and get sick i don't know it's not for me my boss i'm good but natural is the way to go for me i'm a natural person i like natural ass and natural breast if it's natural and honestly i don't like mine super small right but i like mine small and petite i do i got a thing for them. now if you tall you the one for me i like tall women but if you small and petite that's all right with me because i know it's natural i'm okay with that and the reason why I say that is because Ice Spice, she might have lose weight for her health. There's nothing wrong about an artist who was naturally born a little bit thicker wanting to lose weight. There's nothing wrong with that. Right? Many artists are doing it now. Nicki Minaj is losing some, some significant weight looking good. Missy Elliott. Shout out to Missy Elliott because she's on tour with Busta and Sierra and Timbaland. I gotta see if i can score tickets when they come to state farm but missy elliott we all know back in the day she was a little bit heavier missy elliott is fine i want a wife like missy elliott now because when she lost the weight and let me tell you she lost the weight for her she lost the weight because and i'm trying to compare the two artists the different artists here uh, monica but missy elliott was a little bit thicker and that was the, the way back in the day but she says nah i don't want to live this way I don't want to be overweight. I don't want to be fat. I need to lose weight for my health. It's a health thing. I'm getting older. Missy Elliott lost tremendous amount of weight. She looks like her in the face, but she looked different. She looked fine. I would. 
in a heartbeat, in my opinion. So maybe Ice Spice saw the same way with her. Maybe she definitely wanted to lose the weight because she was feeling it. She needed to lose the weight because she was feeling it and she wanted to look her best life and get healthy. That's where I think Ice Spice came into the picture in losing weight. And people are hating her because now she looks different. Uh, we missed you with the fat ass and a little thick, you know. Look, it might be a health thing, guys. A lot of artists are realizing health is wealth. Megan Thee Stallion's doing the same thing. Megan, let me tell you, Megan Thee Stallion, she was heavier set. But she lost the weight. She's getting skinny. Megan Thee Stallion is more like this slim thick now. But she looks good. Especially if you're getting ready to go on tour. Or if you're not on tour already, you're getting ready to go on tour. You need to be healthy for that. It's 30 cities, give or take. 30 cities, 30 nights, nonstop. Go, 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 go. Artists who are on tour, they get exhausted. I saw a post today from Tank. Tank just got off his tour and said, hey, I'm taking a break. It's exhausting to go on tour. I think she looks good. I think Ice Spice is doing her thing. I don't want her to stop doing her thing because her critics don't like her. She prefers them to be her to be uh, thick. Maybe she's doing it for a health reason. Health is wealth. I think a lot of people need to understand this. Health is freaking, freaking wealth. I think everybody, and I'm not saying you got to be a supermodel, but you got to understand. And Monica, I'm very passionate about this because I work out. I was fat back in 2015. I was thick. I was fat and unhealthy. Health is wealth. I sleep better at night. I work out. I'm in the best shape. And I feel confident taking my shirt off at night. Because I know I'm not some big blob. Right? I Spice, if you're somehow watching this show, do not feel ashamed for losing weight. I think it's great. I think you look sexier losing weight, in my opinion. Um, I, mean, I get so passionate about this because I'm tired of people shaming people for losing weight. Like... Losing weight is the best thing you can do. You do want you do not want to be overweight. You don't want to be fat. You don't want to be able to not uh, do some of the things and feel uh, confident because you're you're fat. Now, some people who are fat, they and they're confident in their fatness by all means. And I'm not fat, I'm not fat shaming. But if you're comfortable being big, then you're comfortable being big. But if you say to yourself, "Damn, I want to lose weight because I want to feel good," when I lost weight, guys, I feel good. I feel more confident. Nowadays, because I'm getting more muscle, I'm getting more slimmer, and I'm feeling more healthier. So that way, I know I can live to I'm at least 100, a God willing, if I'm up to 100 years of age, I would probably look good at 100 years of age because I worked out and lost the weight and stayed healthy. God, God willing, you know, so. I just think people need to stop hating. People need to hey, And it's probably people who are fat, who are fat shaming other people because they want to lose it. Jordan Jim, lose the weight. But Ice Spice, you're doing your thing, baby. Don't stop doing it. Don't stop doing your things. Don't stop losing the weight. You look good. So that's going to wrap it up here in the Spectrum Podcast this evening. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one as much as I did. Monica, it's always a blessing to have you in uh, for the studio. I love you. Thank you so much, baby. Um, T, thank you so much for producing our show as well. Stay tuned, guys. We got more podcasting coming on. I think we're going to be back here today is wednesday so we're going to be back with the spectrum podcast i believe on saturday our schedule is a little bit topsy-turvy the next two weeks because we are getting ready to go on vacation number two puerto rico is coming up next week shout out to me and my squad um but stay tuned for more podcasting this week we got more coming out for y'all i love y'all so much thank y'all for staying tuned continuously liking subscribing our viewership has been going up and up and up it hasn't increased we haven't seen a dip yet so keep them coming y'all i love y'all for that uh that's gonna wrap it up here the spectrum podcast with yours klp kennedy lucas and monica gray love y'all we'll catch y'all in the next episode peace live from kennedy lucas studios in atlanta we are keeping things swanky with that new KLP. It's the Spectrum Podcast with Kennedy Lucas, Damian Marks, Simone Teagues, and Monica Gray. Tune in on any major audio platforms now.